Okay, today's uh, YouTube video comes from our Ask Cindy portal on the front page of Learberg.com. And these people that write us, and I say it every time, they don't have to be customers. If you have a question on dog training, on dog breeding, on the healthier dog, on behavioral problems, feel free to go to Learberg.com, scroll down to the Ask Cindy. Cindy's my wife, a much better dog trainer than I am. The fact is, though, that I'm 75 years old. I won't say how old Cindy is or she won't feed me tonight. But we have been training dogs our whole life. We haven't just switched careers later in life. But we get these questions every day. Cindy answers them every day. Some of them are so bad, you sit there and think, they, you can't make stuff like this up. And this one is about a lady that should fire the guy that she, I hate to use the word professional dog trainer because this clown is not a professional dog trainer. I'll read it, we'll talk about it. I will say this, I just finished uh, my last online dog training course on dealing with dominant and aggressive dogs. And if you haven't had one of our online courses, they're divided out into modules and then segments of a module. So they're kind of like outlines. One of the segments in my, in my dominant and aggressive dog online course is how to pick a professional dog trainer. Had this lady had that information out front, she never would have hired this dude. I have no respect for this guy, but I'll tell you, it's everything I can do not to mention a name in here. Hi, Cindy, I've recently found a dog trainer for my eight month old German Shepherd dog. Today was her fourth class. As the dog trainer was bringing her out of my car, there were two dogs off leash that entered the yard that he was going to put her in. My pup's hackles went up and the larger female dog stayed right on her tail. My pup seemed stressed all the way home and after we got home. She, was previously, she has previously been very calm and relaxed and slept when we left the trainers for the first three classes. So this was her fourth class. She went and got her dog from this guy and the dog was stressed all the way home. This time she panted a lot the whole way home and hasn't slept a wink. It's nighttime now and I'm concerned. I told the trainer I don't let her be around other dogs in the event that she is attacked. Good idea. He said that she has to be around other dogs. That statement alone tells you that this guy should not be training dogs for the public. He doesn't know what he's talking about. My question to you is, at what age is it okay for my puppy to be exposed to other dogs, especially ones off leash that don't belong, on, that don't belong to the trainer or myself? So these other two dogs that he let come into the yard that her dog was in were not his dogs. They were client dogs. She goes on to say, thank you so incredibly much, Cindy. I really appreciate your time and help here. Cindy's answer was, so the trainer was bringing the dog to your car. Does that mean the dog goes to the trainer without you? I'm just trying to understand this. Now, I want to say this. In the ticket system, if you would go to Ask Cindy in the front of Learbird.com, you're going to have to put your email in there. We don't spam people, we don't sell emails. We never have, never will. The reason to put your email in there is because when Cindy asks a question, or if you ask a question and Cindy has more questions, she's gonna come back and email you with the question, which is what just happened here. Because a lot of times, I keep saying customer, you don't have to be a customer to ask a question. A lot of times these people won't put enough information in. And for us to give you meaningful advice, we need to get a few more details. In this case, Cindy did, and she asked that. She says, and she said, so the trainer was bringing the dog to your car. Does that mean that the dog goes to training without you? I'm just trying to understand this. 
And the lady came back and said, yes, I'm supposed to be involved in her training, but he won't allow me to be present yet. <laughs> and he won't take video of her training sessions yet, so I can see how he's training her, so I can work with her when she's home. So I was waiting for the trainer to bring her out to me when I noticed these two off-leash dogs entering her yard. He came out and saw the two dogs, but kept walking my pup to my car, letting the other two dogs approach my pup. My pup's hackles went up, and the trainer corrected her by telling her no and pulling her on the leash to my vehicle. This guy's a fool. I can't believe it. Like I said, you can't make this up. This poor puppy is on a leash with somebody that's not her trainer, and God knows what he's doing to her during these training sessions when she's not allowed to be there. And two strange dogs come out in the yard. She gets nervous, and her hair goes up, which means she's nervous, and he corrects her for being nervous. Gee, that really is going to calm her down. That's really going to make her feel like she feels comfortable with this guy. I also wanted to ask you, this is the lady asking Cindy, I also wanted to ask you if it's standard practice for trainers to not allow the dog's owner to be present during training sessions for some reason. I really don't understand that, and I'm becoming incredibly uncomfortable with this. Not to mention the fact that the trainer won't even let me see the video of him training my puppy. Can you please help me? Thank you so very much, Cindy. Then Cindy goes back and she says, if you're uncomfortable with not being allowed to be present or at least have video of the training, then you should follow your gut feeling. My dog training friends that do board and train, and for those new dog trainers that don't understand what a board and train is, a lot of trainers will ask you to take your dog and let them stay with them for realistically good board and trainers will want them for a minimum of three or four weeks. The reason is it takes a dog a week to settle into a new environment and learn how to feel comfortable being about around the new trainer and being comfortable in a dog kennel. Maybe, you know, maybe your dog has been raised in a dog crate in your home, in an x pen and now it has to go into a dog kennel, and it's a young dog with a lot of barking dogs. That's going to freak them out, and it's going to take them a week to settle down. Even if they are, are trainers that train with markers and food rewards, it's still going to take a week. So back to Cindy. My dog training friends that do board and train programs Take the videos and the photos for the owners on a regular, predetermined schedule. As for your original questions, there's nothing wrong with exposing your puppy to other dogs in a controlled environment. But I would never, ever take my adolescent dog off leash around loose dogs. Period. Not ever. Your puppy is at an age where she's learning about the world, and it's only taking one bad experience to create a lifelong issue. And by that, Cindy means if you have a young dog or a puppy or really any dog that is attacked by, a, by another dog that it doesn't know, that dog will always be dog aggressive. That dog will always, they, they take the position of a good defense as a good offense, and they end up being dog aggressive. They end up being reactive to any strange dogs. It takes one time for that to happen, and that's what Cindy's talking about here. Cindy said, how did you find this trainer? I'll restate that if you are, this is Cindy talking, I'll restate that if you're uncomfortable with the process or have changed your mind, then it's up to you to do what's best for your dog. I'll state your concerns <laughs> to the trainer and ask to be present. She, Cindy's telling her that she should, she should restate her concerns to this dog trainer. The lady should restate her concerns to the dog trainer. 
This applies to any type of interaction with your dog, whether it's a vet, a trainer, or a dog sitter. In other words, Cindy's saying, anytime you're going to leave your dog or be around a vet, be around a dog groomer, be around a dog sitter, you should be there when your dog meets these people. If you don't agree or feel comfortable with the situation that you're in, then you should ask either the vet or the groomer or the dog sitter or the trainer. Uh, you should ask them what you expect. And if you're not happy with their answers, then you should leave. Because even in my dominant aggressive dog course, one of the things I talk about in this segment on how to pick a professional dog trainer is to interview these people out front. Get all the details out front on what's expected, what you expect. In, in this case, this woman, if she had done what we said in that segment, she never would have left her dog with this guy. So the lady came back and said, this is someone I met a long time ago. We didn't keep in touch until last week when I heard from him. And he told me he, has a now have, he now has a dog training business. I really messed up because he said he'd give me a super special deal. Voila. And on training, if I paid him $1,500 cash up front, I fell for it and I paid him. Now he's saying that if I want to be present, I have to purchase a bunch of training equipment, including a very expensive e-collar, so that I can observe what he's doing. And I can do it at home. I hope my unfortunate, this is the lady, I hope my unfortunate experience with him can help others avoid the same experience. Is there a place to report a trainer like this to make others aware of him and, <laughs> and anything else by chance? Cindy's answer was, social media would probably be your best avenue for getting the word out on this guy. And then she came back and said, thank you so incredibly much, Cindy, for all of your time and help. I really appreciate it. So, bottom line is, I have to watch what I say sometime. I rather call a spade a spade, and in this case, this guy should never be called a professional dog trainer. And I hope the people that watch this, if they're thinking about hiring somebody to take care of their dog, or to train their dog, go to these people first, interview them, ask them, what kind of training do you do? Are you going to put a remote collar on my dog? When are you going to put a remote collar on your dog? What kind of background conditioning are you going to do if you're going to do uh, use a remote collar? These are the things that you should ask. And if you get a hunky-dory feeling, turn around and say, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we'll keep in mind, but we're not going to sign up for it right now. And then hold your wallet tightly as you run out of their building. <laughs> This is a sad deal. Like I said, we can't make this up. But there are people out there that claim to be professional dog trainers that act like this. And they look for suckers that just don't feel comfortable standing their ground and asking questions and being interviewed or doing the interview.